Hello and welcome to this special edition of Active Adam Presents. Sun 8 Company, a small aerospace job shop in the Southern California area of Orange County. The video we're about to present and share to you is about four minutes in length. Yeah. And it's stuck in time. Yeah. It was a promotional video uh, when only big giant corporations were doing any kind of professional videos. Uh, this four minute long video specializes in my father's company, a company it's called Sunny Company, it's founded in 1973. This film dates from 39 years ago in 1981. Right. Pat couldn't even drive yet. No, guy, you know, back then we're talking, I, I was a freshman in high school. That didn't stop you, though, did it? Somebody got driving lessons, it just wasn't in a car. <laughs> I don't think your dad's ever heard this story, even today. You know, yeah, when his dad was kind of away from the office, that's why I learned how to drive a little forklift. Yeah, the Clark. Oh, and yeah, and boy, the things, now that I think about it today, you know, for, you know, to enhance my forklift skills back then, <laughs> I'd move crates around and all that. And those crates probably contain real expensive parts. A little bit. But, you know, back then, we had no idea. Ah, we could care less. Yeah, you know, kids being kids. Yeah, so that was pretty funny. It's a shop video loaded with lots of CNC machines. Leading edge, cutting technology, five axis, state of the art for its time. Well, there was one five axis, <laughs> one at that time. By the time, it, that was in 81 now, this company lasted through 98. There were lot, there were five axes when it sold, because yeah. it sold in 98. Right. So it was a really neat story, but at least we've captured this kind of in the middle of from 73 to 98. There's this 1981 video, and that's pretty neat right there. Yeah, I think it's really, really fascinating. You know, because like Lance was saying, it's, it was state of the art for its time. When you see these CNC machines, and they're tool boy, changers and they're fifty taper and forty five yeah. taper. And by you really the way. think about it. Think about when this was filmed. It was impressive for a little company. Yeah, yeah a little company. Really yeah. Funny. Oh, this name means it's it's a Masonic Mason statement. Uh, Sun Eight is eternal eternal life and eternal light. Uh, it's the sun which is forever burning and the eight which is the only number. That's uh, what do they call that? Oh, infinity. Infinity. So yeah. the number with any value, zero through nine, that has a, that doesn't stop. So yeah. it's kind of neat. That's how it got its name. Yeah. It's a and, strange thing. And there's going to be two versions of this video. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the first version's actually, not this version. The first version, I basically took the original oh, audio. Oh, mess. The original video. Oh, it was really poor. Because we're talking, remember, this was filmed back in the V8S days. It's been sitting in storage. For in the desert of dry, arid desert with winds and sill the for heat, 39 the years. Yeah. So, so it was in really poor shape. I mean, I had spent a lot of time to enhance the quality. But so we're going to have two versions. The first version is basically untouched. Basically, I just took the video and audio tracks, enhanced it, and that's what you're going to see. And it's pretty funny. Wait till you see this. Boy, back then, you'll see the, the standards they had back then. It's yeah. kind of laughable in today's standards. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then this second version, which is this video, uh, Lance narrates the video. Yeah, and luckily, we were able to salvage the very important part of the video where I make my appearance at a whopping 20 years old. I, <laughs> I thought it was all that then, and I still think I'm all that now, so I, nothing's changed. <laughs> Just got a little older. Yeah. That's it. Oh, and just to give you a sense, you know, we kind of want to give you guys a sense of what we're talking about. When we're talking about 1981, when this was filmed, we're talking about, you know, there weren't really personal computers back oh, my, then. The secretary is still using typewriters in my office. I think they had the little automatic typewriters. That's right. And we just got them uh, little t desktop computers, the, the uh, trash 80s, what they call them, the, the TRA, TRS 80s, I guess yeah. they were portables and... Uh, Portals, the programmers would actually take home and work programming on them at night to, to sure. come back and talk to the bigger computers, you see. And see, back then in the homes, you know, if you had a computer at home, you're really fortunate. And back then, it, no, well, I had an Atari. Yeah. But, you know, there was the, <laughs> and I had an Atari 800 for those that remember. But there was the Ataris, the Commodores, there was even the Sinclair, you know, all those little tiny, funny you know, low-end computers. But even back then, those were really high-end. Well, 
If you expensive. When you watch this video, one thing you are going to see is a quick clip of some. If you, anybody who's been around a long time knows what a Vax computer is, that they're going to see those, and they're going to see them in a special air-controlled room with fire extinguishing systems, right, and everything, all all for I think what fifteen megabytes of storage, <laughs> right. Men with funny suits would show up with these static trucks, and they would they would put these things in this special static controlled fireproof room. Right, to run. back then you were having hard drive crashes were really common. Oh yeah, just one little yeah. speck of dust and was all the discs were huge. Huge, oh, right. It's unbelievable. So you're gonna see a little bit of that and you'll see some tool changer action and you'll yeah, see some you inspection will. and some deburring and, and some, processing and, and stuff. And there's some parts. Oh yeah, a lot of parts. If yeah. you want to see a lot of infrastructure structural components of the inside of a plane when you fly on it, that skin behind that skin's the whole story. Skin's just a pretty picture. Yeah, because when you say aerospace, uh, your dad at the time did work for the aerospace. And yeah, we're just a subcontracting job shop to the big players, Boeing, right? AFCO in Tennessee, Boeing in Seattle, and you know the D Douglas McDonnell Douglas. And this uh, is for British Aerospace this and was for uh, both, Israeli Aircraft Industries. This was for both military and commercial applications, it, it was. right? Okay. Yeah, there's some pretty advanced parts in there. They're yeah. still to this day used, just so you know. The parts didn't change. <laughs> A little bit. Well, great. Let's show the video. All right, let's get to the film. Enjoy great. it. Enjoy. No comments about how young I was. Okay, <laughs> guys, thanks. All right. Bye. Bye. Hi, and welcome to the company my father built and where I, Lance, worked from 1973 at age 10 through 1993 at age 31 when Patrick and I stepped out to begin this journey. We built this twin 60,000 square foot set of buildings on the site of a Christmas tree grower a woman who sold us her very old, well-built home and land, and we built the street atop a high spot looking out over Orange County. We ultimately built a cul-de-sac in 1980. Thanks for taking a few minutes to learn more about Sun 8. I think even a brief look inside our organization will help explain the excitement that we've created in the aerospace industry. We've got the superior technology, a 60,000 square foot facility, a management labor team that's determined to stay on the cutting edge of quality and service. That is my dad, Herb. He is a bit serious, but he used the latest buzzwords of the day in the Southern California aerospace hotbed of those times. Those parts, all laid out across those final inspection tables, are for the major aerospace companies globally, as we were an aerospace job shop to these major suppliers. These are structural components, the main parts under the skin of all aircraft from the beginning to the current of times, for both the commercial and military industries, foreign and domestic. We machined aluminum, magnesium, titanium, stainless, and steels in high chromium alloy types. And here are the CNC machines we had started with, only one and then up to three, and then nine, a magic number for aerospace CNC machining in the 1980-81 era, and finally on up to 22 of these fine CNC machines all with tool changers. All from one Japanese maker, so our repairs and spare parts would cross-fit each other, and most importantly, any setup man or operator could operate any of these machines in the shop at any given time. We had a milling department, rows of knee milling machines, drill press tables, and power mills, a tool and cutter grinding room, a giant room of beautiful cutters. Those are Lister racks and we had their carts. We had a general shop, a first article, and a final inspection area. Quality control is number one in aerospace. Hey, that's with me and my dad, Herb, talking delivery schedules. Hey, who is that stud on the left? Me, Lance. Thought he knew it all then as well. Welcome to the programming department. Those are VAX 11730s through 11780 computers. 
And that is a TRS-80 Trash-80 personal computer. This is the parts deburring and finishing area. This is the tooling and material warehouse where jobs are stored and staged for upcoming demand. This was really leading edge stuff in the late 1970s and early 80s and I personally am very proud to have been here since its beginnings. Thank you for watching Lance and Patrick. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you leave us one of those comments, maybe we have something we can answer. We will never leave a question unanswered. Thank you.